All right, this is the uh, beginning of Chapter 7, Systems of Equations. And the Systems of Equations, kind of review of Algebra 1 stuff a little bit, and we're going to talk about what systems of equations are and how to solve for them. Um, the solutions of systems of linear equations, the x and the y, the, or however many variables we have, must satisfy each equation in the system. And we're going to talk mostly about linear equations with different numbers of unknowns. These are all linear equations, have the first, all the variables are first degree, they're not raised to the second power or anything. And so that's why I call them linear systems, okay? Linear equations, linear systems, same thing. There's three possible ways we can have these linear, with, especially with just two variables like we're going to do in this chap, in this section anyway. And they can be one solution where the lines just cross in one spot. No solutions if they're parallel. Then no, they never cross. There's no solution to it. Or if they're actually the same line, one on top of the other. There's multiple solutions. We can see on the green here, if we divide this everything by 2, we'll get the same equation as that above it. So one solution, most of our problems will be this. No solutions and, and infinitely many solutions once in a while. Okay, so the first one, we're going to review the substitution method for solving it. And this mostly works if you have one of the equations has it easily isolated and x or the y is easily isolated. You know, the y equals something, x plus something, or the x equals y plus or minus something, that kind of thing. We can easily isolate y here. So y would equal, we add x to both sides, would be x plus 3. Then we do a substitution. We, instead of in the set top equation, instead of putting y there, well, we know y equals x plus 3, so we substitute that into the top equation. Then we just solve for x. Use our algebra skill to solve for x. 5x, subtract 6, combine a couple steps there, divide by 5, get x equals 1. Substitute that back up into here. 1 plus 3 is 4, so the solution here is only one solution, 1 and 4. At the point 1, 4, these two lines intersect. And you can check that by substituting one, x equals 1 and 4 into both equations, and it should equal 3 and 11, respectively. Okay, you can also graph this on your calculator. Get, you know, x plus y equals x plus 3 on 1, y equals, and, you know, divide everything by 2, and you get the bottom equation here. Where they intersect, that's going to be the solution. And you can look it on the table, too. The solution set is 1, 4, or on the table values, 1, 4 also. The other way to do that is the elimination method. And we use this one more, especially when um, the, it's, not that, you know, it's not that easy to eliminate one, isolate one of the variables, the x and the y. Both have coefficients in front of them. Maybe and, you know, one is, has a plus and a minus here, so maybe it would be easier to use it doing eliminate easier to figure out one of the equations by eliminating the variable. Okay, so we multiply on this one way. If you want to do the x, we'd multiply by negative 2, and we get on the top equation and by positive 3 on the bottom equation, so we use opposite values here for the x and y. We could have done the same thing with the y variables. We could have multiplied the top by 3 and the bottom by negative 4, and eliminate the y and solve for x. Either way will work. Whichever way you want to do it is fine. So they did this one, and um, they eliminated the um, x variables here and got y, 17y equals 34. You just add those two equations together. y equals 2. Substitute the 2 back into either equation and solve for x. And so the solution was 3. x was 3. y was 2. And you can check by going back into the equation, put those values back into the original equations. Okay, inconsistent system, you get something like this. You, you solve by, um, eliminate one of the variables here, and you get something like this, 0 equals 15. Okay, so there's no solution to this. There's nothing that, you know, all the variables got eliminated. It equals some number here. So it's like, wow, okay, how did that happen? Well, it happens because these two lines never intersect. They actually have the same slope. They're parallel lines. And if we solve these for y equals, we'd see that they had the same slope but different intersects, and they would never um, cross each other. Okay, 
Um, the other one is when it's um, you have infinitely many solutions, and we you know solve this by eliminating. We multiply the top one by by two, and we eliminate the x ones. But when we do that, we also eliminate the y ones. So we had zero, and then we also eliminated the variables over here. So zero equals zero. And we can see that these two equations are exactly the same. If we divided the first, the second equation by negative 2, we'd get negative 4. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So if I divided the second equation by negative 2, I would get the first equation. So they're exactly the same. There's infinitely many solutions. And they just solve one of the equations for x. And they got y minus 2 over 4. So any value we put here for y, if we put you know 10, 0, we could find we could figure out a point that would work on that line. And they did an example here where y equals negative 2. That means that the x value was negative 1, and that's a point that worked on that. But there's infinitely many points that would work on this one because they're both actually the same line. Just the second one is multiplied by negative 2. Everything's multiplied by negative 2, but it's the same line. Okay, this one, if we have a nonlinear system of equations, we got an x squared here, so it's not quite linear, right? So, But the second equation is a little simpler than the first one, so we can solve this one by solving for y here. If we solve for y, y equals, what does it equal? It equals y equals negative 4 minus x over 3. We set it up like this. Move x over to the other side, subtract x, divide by 3, we get this. And then we're going to substitute that into the first equation. Okay, so we use the second equation to solve for y. Then we're going to eliminate the y by substitution. So we substitute it in like that. Well, don't worry about the fraction, right? Because we can just, if it's got it, multiply everything by the denominator. That's going to make that 3 times 3 is 9. You're going to make this side 15. It's going to eliminate that. Uh, fraction in the middle there, and we get negative 2 times negative 4 minus um, x. So the negative 2 times the negative x makes plus 2x. The negative 2 times the negative 4 is plus 8. But then when we subtract 15 from each side, we get negative 7, because we want to solve this as a quadratic. And the solution is here. It's a little tougher to factor than, than maybe you're used to, but this is you, know, you can use your magic X on it if you wanted to, or you could use your calculator on it, you know, to get these two couple values on it. However you want to solve it, it's good with me. So we're not going to go into solving the quadratic here, but you got an X and a Y, two values of X and Y that work for that quadratic. Substitute those into the, one, the original equation, the second equation, and you get y equals that. So we solved that one for y when x was negative was seven ninths and we solved this one for y when x was negative one we got y equals negative one so the solution was seven ninths and negative forty three twenty seven to negative one negative one okay the other way you can solve these equations nonlinear ones is graphically with your calculator right and plug these solve this second one for y you get y equals 2 equals, you know, the absolute value x plus 2. We know that's going to be a v-shape shifted over to the left two units. Okay, so we first graph it would look like this. And it may only look like there's one intersection here at 2, 4. Okay, but we can, but we have to investigate this, this section down here where the bottom of the v. And that's what they've done on these other two screens. They put the, you know, they zoomed in on that so that the y value went from 1 to negative 1. And x was negative 4 to 0. So they really zoomed in on that part of the screen. And now you can see that it does cross in two other places. So here and here. And they just worked the calculator magic to solve the intersection. There are actually three solutions to this. Where three places where these two graphs intersected each other. And the last kind of, of problem we're going to do is an application of of these systems of linear equations and you have typical problems like this and here's the three basic steps determine the unknown quantities let different variables represent those quantities and write a system of equations one for each variable okay so in this one they made you know the national average spent on varsity athletes one male and one female was 
$6,050 for Division 1A schools. The average expenditure for male athletes, though, was over was 3,900 greater than female. Determine how much was spent between varsity athletes of each gender. Okay, so we need to get a variable for each gender, an X and a Y. They usually use that. And unlike biology, you know, the math people use the X for the male and the Y for the female. Biology, you know, the X, if you had an X chromosome, you'd be female, and a Y chromosome, you'd be male. But, hey, this is math. Okay, so we get the average, the X average expenditure on male and female. You know, average expenditure, one plus the other one, divided by two is 6,050. So we multiplied both sides by two and got X and Y added together equal 12,100. And so the other equation we got was that the male expenditures, the X minus the Y, male minus the female expenditures was 3,900. That was from the other ones. Males spent 3,900 more on males than they did on females, but together they spent 12,100 on both of them together. So how much did they do on each one? We got to figure out the X and the Y here. And this is set up great for elimination. We just add the two equations together. Get 2X equals 1,600. So X equals 8,000. That's how much they spend on each male athlete. And so subtract 3,900 from that, and you get how much they spent on each female athlete. Okay, so that's a quick kind of review of systems of linear equations and how to solve the kind of problems you'll see in your book. So answer the questions on the form, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.